A very good morning, Orchidians. How are you all doing today? So this is a vibrant morning, and you're all awaited here. Do you know why you have assembled here? It's for the youngest Tani's conclave, and uh, it's something great initiated. It's a great initiative by the TOS uh, in uh, recognizing innovative solutions around the world. And uh, firstly, I would like to thank the distinguished principal and the distinguished director of TOS for having invited me here and giving me this privilege to address this vibrant gathering this morning in the presence of Mr. Bajaj, the stalwart of automobile industry, who rewrote the history of sports biking in India with his legendary Pulsar that has a global footprint. So I am indeed very lucky to share this dais with him today. I'm also very blessed to be standing here in a school uh, where Dr. Kalam, the epitome of wisdom and benevolence, had set his foot on five years ago. Today, I'll be sharing with you insights of how I invented a device to detect silent heart attacks from merely a small idea. So when I was 13, my grandfather succumbed to a silent heart attack. So when the disease hits so close to home, I knew I, did, I needed to learn more. So I went online to find answers for this. So using the internet, I found a variety of statistics on heart attacks, and what I had found shocked me. So can, I, can we have the next slide, please? So over 85% of all heart attacks go unnoticed just because they cannot be diagnosed due to the lack of absolute symptoms when someone has less than 2% chances of survival. That means less than two, two people out of every 100 has a chance of survival. Can we have the next slide, please? So why are we so bad at detecting silent heart attacks? The reason today's current modern medicine is a 60-year-old technique, and it's non-proactive. But also, it's extremely expensive, costing roughly about rupees 5,000, for a TROP T test and more than a lakh for a medical treatment post a heart attack, which is certainly not an option for low income patients. In addition, a heart attack is a non symptomatic disease. Your doctor would have to be ridiculously suspicious that you're prone to a heart attack to give you a blood test. And for example, when a patient is admitted to a hospital, for instance, with a chest pain, Doctors draw blood and test for a standard biomarker called troponin, which can indicate cardiac ischemia or oxygen deprivation in the cardiac muscle. However, a critical flaw in the blood test is that they are totally ineffective in the detection of silent heart attacks, which often occur with ambiguous symptoms, if any at all. In the case of diabetic patients, the associated nerve, do nerve damage block blocks out the chest pain that would otherwise prompt the patient to seek immediate medical attention. Because silent heart attacks are usually asymptomatic, patients don't have any complaints, and consequently, there's no reason to have this blood test. As a result, silent heart attacks commonly go unnoticed and until they cause a significant irreversible damage. Learning this, I knew there had to be a better way out. So I set up a scientific criteria as to what a sensor would have to essentially look like in order to effectively detect a heart attack several hours prior to an unlikely event. Can we have the next slide, please? So the objective of the sensor that I wanted to construe must be inexpensive, rapid, simple, selective, and non-invasive, and most importantly, portable and wearable. The framework to my invention was the significant changes that the organ undergoes before a total failure, which will eventually result in a massive cardiac arrest. To be clear, the heart keeps on signaling out and sending out SOS impulses before completely failing. So I was wondering what the signal could be and how do I detect it? So this formed the basis of my invention. The signal with which the heart is reaching out to you is technically called a cardiac biomarker or a protein 
that's found at higher levels in your bloodstream on the onset of a cardiac ischemia. This sounds really straightforward, but it is anything but. So you see you have all this healthy blood and liters of liters of healthy blood, but you're looking for this tiny increase in this tiny amount of protein. So that's almost next to impossible. So then I came across an article on the internet that listed a database of over 8,000 different proteins that are found before a heart attack. Now I decided to go and make it my new mission to go through all these proteins and see which one could serve as an optimal biomarker for a non-invasive detection of these asymptomatic heart attacks. With two conditions in mind, one, it should be a process that incorporates self-diagnosis and two, it must include early detection. And so I'm just plugging out and chugging out through this gargantuous task. And finally, after innumerable tries, I find my protein. Can we have the next slide, please? And the name of the protein that I located is called FABP3. And it's a protein that's found at levels close to four nanograms per ml in normal human beings. But on the onset of a cardiac ischemia, the levels of the protein keeps increasing abysmally. So that's the trigger point. So that's the signal that the heart is giving us. The key is that it is found in the earliest stages of a myocardial infarction or a cardiac arrest. So when someone has close to 100% chance of survival. So now that I'd found a reliable protein to detect, so I then shifted my actual focus to actually detecting that uh, protein and thus silent heart attacks. Now my breakthrough came in the most unlikely place for innovation, possibly the most unlike, uh, unlikely place for innovation, my high school biology class, the absolute abhor or stifler of innovation. So and I snuck in this article of protein differentiation from where I started my research. And, uh, but it was shortly afterwards that I discovered that my once brilliant procedure had something like a million holes in it. And over the course of 23 months, almost 23 months, I painstakingly filled each and every one of those holes. And the result, one small patch type sensor that costs rupees 900 and works 24 by 7. Can we have the next slide, please? So this is the patch. This is the patch type sensor. So and this makes it about 200 times faster over five times less expensive and 100 times more sensitive than the current standard of detection. So how does it work? So once the sensor band is worn around your wrist, a very small magnitude of positive charge is induced to detect and accumulate these proteins, these negatively charged FABP3 molecules. And it sounds very simple, isn't it? But it's probably not. The most crucial part is post-accumulation of these proteins. So where I developed a unique spectroscopical method to non-invasively detect these proteins without taking a blood test. So it's completely non-invasive. You need not take a blood test, and you'll find out whether you're going to get a heart attack or not. So that's the best part. And that's where the secret formula lies as well. So the device will hence indicate to the patient that his FABP3 levels are taking a steady rise, and uh, he has to seek immediate medical attention. One of the best parts of the sensor, though, is that it has close to 100% accuracy and can detect the coming of silent heart attacks in the earliest stages, six hours prior to the event. So when someone has close to 100% chance of survival. The sensor could potentially lift the silent heart attack survival rates from a dismal 5.5% to close to 100%. And so hopefully one day, with the help of these devices, we can always have those loved ones with us. And now to give you a brief idea about the current status of development of this device, I have a global patent pending for this device in six countries, including India. After signing a MOU with Ames New Delhi, and the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India, of, for, for the commercial production of the uh, device earlier this year. The device now proudly holds clinical validation from Ames New Delhi, Tokyo University of Science, Japan, 
and the Royal Society of Medicine, London. It is likely to surface out by the end of 2018 for use by the public. Hadn't my parents supported me in all of these endeavors, be it initial funding until I got a grant from the president, or emotional support at, at the times when I had tons and tons of failures, I wouldn't have been here before you presenting to you a device that has the potential to revolutionize modern medicine. Fellow friends, just remember, we are still on the shores of a vast ocean of scientific knowledge, which is unfathomable, waiting to be discovered by your inquisitive minds. Step out and make the world better with science. Thank you very much.